you know, knowledge is when we use it for great things, which I think now a lot of people in our generation are looking at is let's go forth and do good and do good in the world, not necessarily maximize, you know, my profit or my paycheck or anything like that. And people in my class are going out and doing some amazing things and making the world a better place. And I think that's what, you know, why a lot of us went to SIS is, you know, how can we get more knowledge to go out and make a bigger impact than we were making before? I'm Chris Meyer, we're in the Diary and Province of Panama on the border of Colombia. We're in the community of Arimai, an indigenous village where planting empowerment, the business I'm a part of, is doing a mixed species timber plantation to plant trees and provide employment opportunities to local populations here. Our goal is to help these people maximize their economic return from the land we see here. Currently, they're forced to do some of the slash and burn agriculture because that's what the resources they have available to them. And what we want to do is give them an economic alternative by taking some of these parcels of land you see here denuded and making them into mixed species timber plantations. By planting trees on degraded land that used to be for used for cattle grazing, the farmers that we are working with are making more money than they used to. A lot of the land practices from people out here is basically slash and burn, cut all the jungle down, and then put cattle on it. What we want to do is say, hey, give me a piece of that, and I'm going to lease that land from you. And that's going to give you, every month, a monthly payment. And so that you can count on that to put food on your table, to put your kids through school. So when we harvest some of these trees, they're going to earn some of the, the profit that's made from the, selling that lumber. And how tall is this tea tree? This tea tree's got to be good. 12 feet, 15 feet, it's only a year old. It grows like weeds here. Same thing with this one. But give me two years and all these will be you know, trees that we've planted right here. With a bunch of stuff underneath, of course, still. In 20 years, big old tall trees, 40 feet tall, beautiful, nice thick, monkeys jumping around, all that fun stuff. Our long-term goal is that the owner of this plantation, where we are right now, is going to say, this is economically good for me, I want to do this, I want to continue this. But he's going to have the technical knowledge to go and do all the pruning, to do the maintenance, where to put the trees, uh, how to plant them correctly, and then also have the capital to be able to plant everything, pay for it all, manage it correctly, doing his own accounting, old financing, all that. And then he'll be able to, again, instead of just realizing a percentage of that, the profit from this project, he's going to be able to realize all of it. And he's going to go out, use the money that we paid him from his profit sharing, and he's going to go out and plant this again. How we finance these payments and planting all the trees is by raising capital from people in the United States. People who want to make an investment, want to make money, but also want to make an impact with their investment. Well, we believe that there's a market now of people, investors in the United States, who care more about just maximizing their economic return. And they believe that they can have an economic return, but at the same time, do good things. <laughs> the School of Advanced International Studies at Johns Hopkins helped me prepare for this project by giving me a very good base in development theory. That's allowed us to design these different contracts and negotiations, build those relationships that we need to, we need to have a success with this project. We want this to be a win. If this can be a win for the people that we're working with, the poor people that are out here, it's going to be a win for our investors, and it's going to be a win for us. If we can show that this is a, a model that works, that people want to do on the ground here, but also that investors from the United States want to finance, then we believe our competitors will copy us. If other people start copying us, great. And that's just more competition for us, which means we have to provide a better product to those people at the ground to get their land uh, to be able to put under plantations. But this could be, we think, replicated in various other countries, regions, not just in Panama, expanded from this valley to other parts of Panama, other groups of people, and to other countries, to Brazil. I mean, basically, we see is where if there's anybody who has natural resources or I mean assets that have to do with the land but aren't necessarily maximizing that, that return and there's the opportunity to plant trees on them, that's where we want to go.
Trees sequester carbon, and we're planting trees. We're going to plant 11,000 this year. We planted 11,000 last year. We're sequestering now 120 tons a year. You can see some jungle out there, and that might, let's say, here they have here 200 tons if it's primary forest, a forest that hasn't been cut down. 200 tons of carbon that are sequestered in all that vegetation there. Now, when you see, like, for example, that poised place down there that's been cleared recently, I mean, that does has basically zero tons of carbon left. And so all that 200 tons that was sequestered there has gone. Here, what you see is regeneration. As we scale this, we'll start to sequester significant amounts. They're going to need to be about 20 to 30 million hectares. It's approximately about 50 million acres of tree plantations planted each year. And start getting that carbon out of the atmosphere that's heating up the globe and into the back into these trees, helping to cool the planet down. The first time I had gotten out here and helped prepare the land last year, helped stake it, helped do a lot of the cleaning with the machete and stuff. Six months later, I came back and I saw the trees, and these trees are you know, 10 feet tall, and you're like, wow, those are my little babies. <laughs> and so there's a lot of pride that, of course, that generated, and you're like, ooh, wow, this is me, I helped make that happen. And of course, to see something that you made happen be live and there and, and real is very, it's very powerful. And then we go and visit the, the gentleman that, before had just been living in a, a boarded, boarded house, no dirt floor with 10 kids, two small rooms, maybe let's say 300 square feet. And now with the money we've been paying him, he's been sending his kids to school. He's got food on the table all the time and he's building another house out of brick. So, I mean, to see those changes, those positive impacts on that person also, of course, makes you, know, makes you feel really good. And uh, yeah, it makes me think that we're making a very positive change. Well, knowledge is the power to make a difference and to make change and to make things better. I'd like to say thank you to all the donors for helping people like me and the rest of the students at Johns Hopkins go out and make a difference.